Welcome to all of you to our Christmas Eve service. We will be having communion and we will be uh, lighting candles later on to sing uh, Silent Night. Um, the only announcement that I know of for tonight is that we are having a service tomorrow morning uh, for Christmas Day at 9.30. Uh, if there are those of you who want to come back, that's always nice. And, or if you know someone who wasn't here tonight. Are there any other announcements that, uh, that need to be made? Then let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Let us read responsively Psalm 96. I will read the plain print, and you follow with the bold print. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord, proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Let us sing the first three verses of O Come All Ye Faithful, number 283. Was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We will remain seated and sing hymn number 279, O Little Town of Bethlehem. darkness 
have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us sing hymn 282, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. <laughs>
prophet Isaiah. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Let us sing hymn 272, Lo, how a rose e'er blooming.
Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let us sing hymn 288, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration before Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, 
who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. We will now sing a version of Away in the Manger in the With One Voice book. And this will be accompanied by the piano and the bell choir.
small God, a fragile God, a vulnerable God. In our pains and our sorrows, in our weakness and our worries and our weariness, we cry out to the most powerful being in or beyond the universe. God, you can do anything. You made every minute atom and every vast galaxy. You set our hearts beating and made us yearn for what is good. You are almighty, all-knowing, always present. Why don't you do something to help us? And what answer do we receive? To us a child is born, to us his son is given, a baby, a helpless God in the arms of a young, inexperienced mother and a stepfather. So when Mary held the baby Jesus in her arms, he was a newborn with tiny fingers, the softest skin, eyes that couldn't yet focus, totally helpless, dependent on her for his food, his warmth, his care, lest he starve or freeze or die from illness. We may know the responsibilities of raising a child, of nurturing, protecting, and guiding that child. We may experience the worries of watching a child playing in a dangerous place, making choices that will affect him his whole life, growing up and living his own life. But can we imagine the enormity of the weight of the responsibilities or the worries of raising the Son of God? Mary had said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And Joseph had accepted the angel's word not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. But when reality presented itself to them in the form of a precious infant who could not yet speak, although he was the eternal word of God, what might they have felt? Mary would soon be told that a sword would pierce her heart on account of this child. And Joseph would have to take his family into exile as refugees in order to protect him. What must it have been like for them to know that they had been given the task of caring for the vulnerable child who was God incarnate? There were angels, angels to announce his birth, guide his stepfather, warn his family of danger, and angels to sing to shepherds in the countryside. Just imagine the sound of that song. But the angels never seemed to have stepped in directly to, to save Jesus from danger. His stepfather had to act on their warnings, and it was his responsibility to preserve his son's life, the life of the Son of God. A dependent God, a human God, a foolish God? When the time would come for him to grow into who he would be, there would still be questions. Why don't you do something to help us? And he would do some things. He would heal some people of their illnesses, give some people sight who had been blind, and even raise a few people from death. And he would teach. He would teach all of us how to love God and love one another. And he would send the Holy Spirit to help us. But he wouldn't step in and end oppressive governments. He wouldn't make those who were evil stop doing evil things. These may be the kind of things we expect a God who is all-powerful ought to do. But the babe of Bethlehem reveals to us a God who does not prevent people from making their own bad choices, but rather a God through whom, through 
who through his own vulnerability would allow evil to do its worst to him, even to kill him. And yet, then he would be resurrected. And Jesus would promise that the day would come when there would be no more death, disease, or danger, and his ability to raise the dead and to rise from death himself proved that, yes, he does have the power to make that day come. And so on this night, we celebrate the birth of the vulnerable God. Nails, spear, shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. What child is this? The Word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. Amen. So let us stand and sing hymn 296, What Child Is This? <laughs> Thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures, and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest atom to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. 
Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease, especially in Ukraine. God of grace, hear our prayer. You cherish those who are most vulnerable, protect infants and children, and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain, especially all those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Shelter refugee families and those who have no home. God of grace, <coughs> your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones, or grieving. God of grace, you welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace, Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share with one another a sign of peace.
there is wine. In the silver chalice, there is grape juice. So when I give you the piece of bread, and you'll go and dip it into either the wine or the grape juice, and then eat it. And we will start uh, with people on this side, and just come, uh, and then you know, just fill in the spaces. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to our grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, in the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.
nature to life. Amen. We will now light our candles before we sing a silent night. So if I could have a couple of people come forward to begin. Um, and people will come down the, the center aisle with the lit candle. Always keep the lit candle straight up and down. And then the person with the unlit candle uh, hold the candle horizontally.
the Father of hope, fill, uh, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Christ the Savior is born. Thanks be to God.